Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well in our last video we created this little image here that's got a very slow Ken Burns type zoom effect. If you look at it there it's sort of zooming slowly in and out. What we're going to do today is show you how to add some text, an icon and a little call to action button over the top of it. And still have that sort of zoom effect going on in the background. So let's get started. I'm not going to rewrite this code because we've already got it and I will paste this code down below the video for anybody that just wants to copy and paste it and I'll start this image off again so you can see how to do that. So remember this code will be down below the video. Let's start a new page and we'll start from scratch. Okay, let's give it a little title, whatever you want to call yours, Ken Burns Call to Action. Okay, let's build from scratch. And what we did last time, we added a single row. Anybody that's already built the image and watched that last video, zoom forward and we'll show you how to do that. Divi comes as standard with all these modules. Plenty enough to build just about any site. If you've got WooCommerce installed, it'll give you an extra dozen to display your products also. I need to use the image module for this today, so I'm just simply going to click on the image right there. It's going to prompt us to add one. Let's shake things up and perhaps use a different image for this today. Okay, we've got that image right there. Don't want to put a link or a background in there. What I do though want to do though is make this a hero image, so let's stretch it full width. To do that we need to go into the row. Green tab for a row, blue tab for a section, dark tab for a module. I'm going to go into the row. I'm going to go over to the design tab, the sizing. Width I'm going to take up to 100%. I'm going to select the 100%, copy it, control C and paste it in the max width below, control V, and we've got a full width image right there. You're welcome to type that in if you don't want to paste it. Great, but that's way too deep for me, that image. I only want my image to be probably about 700 tall. So while we're still in the row, I'm going to roll down, height, I'm going to give it 700. Now you won't see any difference when I actually do this because we've got overflow. The overflow is whatever falls out the bottom of a row here. So to fix that, go over to your advanced, down to visibility, and here's horizontal vertical overflow. Switch both of these to hidden. You may not see the difference on the builder end, but it will work on the front end. Great, so we've got that hidden. If I actually click on that image now, you'll see it cuts it off just right there. Okay, there's our row taken care of right there. We've still got a gap at the top, so I need to take any padding away from it, which is in spacing. Just put a zero. And the bottom hit the chain, it'll do the bottom too. That last little bit of padding is in the section, and we'll do the same for that also. I also want to move this image up a bit so I can see more of it. So I'm going to give it a bit of negative margin on the top to do that. We didn't do that in the last one because the last image fitted a lot better. So if I click on that image, let's go back in there. And let's roll it up by, I'll try 300 picks and see what we've got going on there. So in the design, look at that spacing here. I'm going to give it a negative margin. So I'm going to say negative or minus 300 pixels. Yeah, that's pulled it up. It's pulled it up nicely there. Great. Now I'd, I do need to take our padding away from the section. So while we're in here, I'm going to do that, save that, click on it again, go up to the blue tab, and you can see the gap between the blue and the green right there. Just go into the blue tab, the section, design, spacing. Put a zero in there. Hit the chain. There we go. We've got our 700. And I'm seeing what I want to see of that image there. It's kind of adjusted. Now to get that Ken Burns effect working on it, and I know a lot of people will be complaining that's not a real Ken Burns effect. No, that's just what we're calling it today. But it is that type of thing. 
I'm going to copy the class name of the code that we wrote, KB image right there, Control C to copy, and I'm going to go back to our page. Let's get out of the section. We want to go into the actual image itself, so click on the image. If you can't find the tab once you're in there because we moved this, what we can do is hit the purple button, go to wireframe or back end mode down on the bottom left hand side here. And there's our image, go in there. Now we can flip back to desktop mode to see what's going on. Go over to advanced. And in CSS ID and classes, we need to just paste that class name that we copied from our customizer in there. As you can see, that image is slowly starting to zoom in there. That's great. What I'm going to do just to make things easier is I'm going to take that away and we'll put it back in in a moment. So there's no animation because now I want to add our text overlay. So let's save this. I'm actually going to go back into the back end again, a little wireframe mode. I'm going to duplicate this whole row. But before I do, I want to make sure there's no gutters there. So let's go into our row, to the design, sizing. Here's custom gutter width. Let's flip that to on and take it all the way down to one. That way there will be no gaps when we add more modules to this or when we add another row it'll be right underneath with no gap and we know this is 700 so we can move this one we add up 700 to go on top of it so now I'm going to clone it there it is don't want an image in it we get rid of the image I'm going to add an icon obviously you put in whatever you want on your site Divi's just partnered up with Font Awesome, so there's an awful lot of icons to scroll through. You can do a search if you want to, or there's a little button here with a pop out if you want to scroll through that way. Let's put that little heart up there, that's fine for me today. And if you want to, you can sw switch back to desktop mode so you can see what's going on there. And if I roll down below our image there, there's our little heart right there. I want to add a call to action module under that. So let's save our little icon and I'll click on it and add another module. I'm going to use a call to action because it's got a button on it or it will have when I put one in there. Obviously put your title there, whatever you want your website to say, whatever you want your button to say here. I'm going to put in learn more and obviously put in whatever text you want in down below here. Now, there's no button on there at the moment. It's because we haven't put a link in for a button that says learn more. So just below is a link. If we click on that. Here's the button link URL. Put it, your link in there where you want to take people. I'm just going to put a hashtag. As soon as I put that in there, the button will show up. There it is right there. Great. Okay, well, I am going to use a background probably to make this stand out on our background there but we'll do that in a moment. I'll leave that just as it is. Let's go over to our design tab. Text is fine as it is. Title text, I want to make that a little bit bolder. So I'm going to make it uppercase. I'm going to make it bold. And obviously styling is entirely up to you. I'm going to take it up a little bit in size. And I'm going to give it a little bit of text shadow underneath. My body text down below is okay. I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. Maybe 18 pics. Great. But I don't want it actually spreading out all the way along here. I want it about 50% of the size of the full width of what we're going on there. So let's go, while we're still in our design, we'll go to sizing. Let's close out the body text. Sizing. I'm going to say width. Let's take it down to sixty-five percent. I think will do for me. And we can pop it in the middle, so it's right in the middle there. That's great. Okay, let's start that button a little bit. Don't I'm good, I'm happy for it to be like that. But when we hover over it, I want to give it a coloured background. So if we close up sizing. 
go just up above it you'll find the button hit the little switch to use custom styles for the button button text colors fine button background okay well on regular state I'm gonna have it transparent like it is but I'm actually gonna put transparent in there then common to most Divi modules if you want to hit set a hover state if you hover over the dark writing you'll see some icons appear go to the one that you want to affect in our case the button background here hit the little arrow if there is one and that'll bring up a desktop and a hover state for you desktop's fine with the transparent right there when we hover over it let's give it a purple background fantastic that works perfectly for me let's flip it back to desktop there okay well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this whole row up so it's on top of our image above and as I mentioned before if I save this and go back to wireframe mode I know this row is 700 pixels deep because that's what I gave it and I cloned it so this one is as well so if I give this a negative margin of minus 700 it'll pull it up on top of the row above so I'll go to design spacing and here I can give it negative 700 and let's go to the front end so we can actually see it do it so margin top negative 700 pixels there we are and as you can see it's now sitting on top of our image which is just exactly what we want but I don't like the color of that icon and I don't like that background color there either so we're in the row at the moment I'm going to give it a bit of padding at the top that's going to push our icon down perhaps 150 so let's give it try 150 yeah that's going to work for me it's kind of central and we'll change the color of that icon and get rid of this background or see what works for us yeah that works absolutely fine so let's save this and again we may need to go to the back end to do this wireframe mode because we've got overlapping modules here so the icon design wise we just want to change its color I don't really want to change the size or anything like that if I click on here just change it to white works for me if you want to make it bigger or smaller you can do so just here alignment wise it's fine great well, let's sort out our call to action next then again I'm going to go to wireframe mode to get to it there it is we'll flip back and let's take that background away and see what it looks like just simply put a transparent one in there yeah that's not too bad what I think I'll do is just put a, a dark one in there click on the dark field and the second slider here the variegated one is opacity or transparency I can take this down just so that writing stands out a little bit more let's round out those corners as well in fact, I can probably take it down even a little bit more than that yeah I can still read that nicely and I'll round out those corners so in design go to border let's give it 10 pixels perhaps slightly rounded corners I'll do the slightly rounded corners there and perhaps a bit of a gap between the icon and itself so I can do that with a bit of margin still in the design let's go to margin which will be in spacing margin top let's give it 30 picks and you'll see a 30 picks gap appear between the icon and the top of that gray area right there there we go that's going to work for me I think I might want to take that color down a little bit our buttons are getting slightly lost in there only slightly though so again let's go back to the content and the background color and I'll take that dark down up just a little bit that's great okay now we need to make our image do what it was doing before so let's save that and all we need to do for that is give it that class name again so that we'll go back to the wireframe mode we'll copy that class name again back to the page and we want to do that in the image remember advanced CSS IDs and classes and we want to put it in the class name there 
control V. Now if I switch back, it's starting to animate out slowly. Great, perfect. Well, let's save our changes. We'll publish this page or save draft. Let's exit the visual builder. And there we go, guys. There's our little animated image, hero image background. And we've got a call to action on top that will take people places. Our button's going to change color when we roll over the top of it. And we've got our little icon up here. Really nice little effect to have on your site. As I say, that code's down below. You're welcome to copy it and paste it. Use it how you wish. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.